Hello everyone, this is me, Hayman Aziz. Uh, this series is on mathematical image of infinity in dividing geometrical shapes. Uh, the reason in which I called it image rather than just infinity itself, because infinity uh, to me doesn't exist in that sense in which we can visualize it uh, practically. But image may make more sense. Uh, this contains a number of parts. Uh, the first part in which is starting from here, and hopefully you will see the other parts in other different videos. Uh, there are a few points in which I need to clarify before we start analyzing and uh, stating this theorem here. Uh, firstly, here, whenever we mention shape, uh, shape simply either can be one dimensional, such as line, curve, and uh, loop, for instance, here, and the size in this case is length. Or, uh, for example, in two dimensional, and in this two dimensional, like curved surfaces, uh, such as uh, square, for instance, here can be plane or can be curved, circle, even irregular shapes. In all of them, irregular can also be valid. And the size uh, in this here is uh, area. Three dimensional, such as cube. Uh, sphere, irregular shapes such as stone, rocks, and etc. The size uh, here is volume. Uh, what is the theorem? Uh, the theorem simply is as the following. Uh, if, for example, we have got a shape, any one of the above, and then if you divide it into n equal pieces, and then now remove one piece from the shape, uh, from the remaining n minus one pieces left, take any piece, because they are all equal, and uh, subdivide it into n equal pieces, as we did in the first part or step, and remove one of the pieces, and continue this process indefinitely, it means to infinity, and then at the end, regardless of uh, the nature of the shape, only n minus 2 divided by n minus 1 proportion ratio of the original size remains. Uh, to prove this theorem, we can use any of those shapes, by the way, here, but there is no point for, for example, in here going through all of them because uh, they are quite similar. Uh, in the way in which you show it. Now, uh, what I did here, I just assumed for simplicity uh, to the shape, like, uh, for example, any shape, in which even on purpose I just assumed it regular, and then I assume this area is one unit square. Uh, it doesn't matter. It means uh, whatever area you assume, obviously, you will reach to the same. And then uh, if you now divide it into n equal pieces, the n equal pieces, even geometrically, the interesting part of this theory here is they don't need to be the same. Maybe one of them is triangle, one of them is rectangle, one of them is an irregular shape. But the main point is they are all having the same area. Okay? And then certainly if I divide it into n shapes, area of each is equal to 1 over n. And then now I detached uh, one piece aside. Now uh, I take uh, any, any one of these uh, from the remaining part here, and then I do split into another n pieces. And obviously here, if this is 1 over n, the area of each is 1 over n squared. And then certainly the sum of those two areas is equal to 1 over n plus 1 over n, the whole square, which is uh, easy. Uh, the same procedure now as before is repeated for this small piece. 
and you continue this process indefinitely and then you remove each time here the area and then certainly uh, the total area in which you remove will be 1 over n plus 1 over n squared 1 over n cubed. I think uh, this is quite well known uh, series in which we have learned it even in basics of maths and uh, the sum can be added to infinity the reason is clear because the common ratio is 1 over n and 1 over n automatically here is less than 1 otherwise we can't uh, sum to infinity and then certainly if you apply the sum to infinity which we have learned it uh, okay, and then we know this is equal to 1 over n minus 1. And then the remaining area here will be, if the original area is 1, then take away that, then you will get this interesting uh, formula, which is quite easy. n minus 2 divided by n minus 1. So it means if, for example, here I have got a shape, if I divide it into two equal pieces, in this case n is equal to 2, and then at the end here, um, definitely if I'm substituting 2 minus 2, then uh, nothing is left. If n is equal to 3, 3 minus 2 is equal to 1, and then 3 minus 1 is equal to 2, then half of the area is left. If I originally uh, subdivided into three equal pieces and the same. Uh, the same idea obviously can be applied to a one-dimensional shape like a string, for example, or a rope, for instance. Uh, can be like a 3D, like a piece of rock, and on purpose here I just assumed irregular shapes. Uh, because so that the theory is valid for any and then this uh, magic ratio will be n minus 2 uh, divided by n minus 1 and this is quite interesting and uh, the reason is because it is independent on the number of dimensions and even the topology of the shapes nothing is good to do with those it's so generic now, uh, there is another extension uh, which is quite interesting to this theory. If, for example, assume that you split into infinite number of pieces, or if n approaches infinity, uh, we will get another interesting result. Uh, then, obviously, here, if I have got the same magic number in which I did it before, if I take the limit, I think uh, from calculus we have learned that uh, we can't just take the limit uh, here because you will get infinite or infinity divided by infinity which is an undefined uh, number and then normally what we do either we use La Hopital's rule or maybe simply here uh, we can divide the numerator and denominator by n then we can take the limit and then we will get 1. So it means eventually here you will get 1. Uh, finally, it means 1 is left, uh, for instance, here. Uh, the relation to uh, absolute reality, basically here to me, this has got a philosophical consequence or maybe explanation here. In reality, uh, if you have got any piece of uh, unknown information here, you can just split into n pieces, and then each piece you can split it into n pieces here. But if we look at uh, reality here, any information you have may contain infinite number of sub-unknown information, and then eventually here, uh, you will never reach to the absolute reality. But obviously here, this needs uh, itself another video uh, to fully explain this and how this analysis can be related to here. Um, the end, uh, according to me here, is no end. Uh, it means we haven't reached to any end here, unfortunately, because this is a path of infinite or infinity. 
Thanks for watching and hopefully I will see you in another video.